Yo, what's going on guys? You're watching jQuery for Beginners of Lesson 25 and in this video I want to talk about how we can use plugins to extend jQuery's usage. Wow. Alright then gang, so what is a plugin? Well, a jQuery plugin is essentially just a piece of code that someone else has written that we can use to extend the functionality of jQuery itself when we use it. For example, you saw me in a previous tutorial make a fader for those block quotes down here, right? and it amounted to about 10 lines of code over here. Now you can bet your life that someone out there has already written a piece of code with this kind of functionality and packaged it into a jQuery plugin that we can download and use so that we don't have to write out all of that code ourselves and we can just call upon the plugin when we need it. So that's what we're gonna do in this tutorial. We're gonna find a plugin, download it, and use it to create a similar kind of functionality for these block quotes. Now, I've already got this page open here, responsiveslides.com, and this is a neat little jQuery plugin. Uh, I use it quite a lot on some of my projects. And essentially, it just does this kind of thing right here. You see these images are fading into one another and it kind of cycles through them all. Now, that's what we're gonna use for our block quotes because it doesn't have to be images, it can be anything you want. So if you scroll down here to the bottom of this page, then you're gonna find this download the latest version from GitHub. So you wanna click that, and then it's gonna take you to the GitHub page, scoot all the way over to the right here, and then find this button, download zip. Click that, it's gonna download a zip file, or a zip folder to your computer. And what you wanna do is extract that and find this file inside. Once you find that file, you wanna transfer it to your script folder, like I have done right there. So now we can call upon it, all right? So, once you've done that, let's get back to it and start installing this plugin. Now, if we scroll down to this bit here, the usage is gonna tell us how we can use this plugin. And most plugin sites will tell you how to use their plugin, all right? So, first step is to link up the files. Now, if we come to the head right here, it's asking us to link up the jQuery min file. Now we've already got this, we've got jQuery at the top already, so we don't need to do that. Then it's saying load in the responsive slides file. So let's copy that and we're going to paste it over here under the jQuery link. Now we need to change this so that it's in the scripts folder because that's where we've put it. There we go. And you'll notice that it's under the jQuery link. And that's really important because this is dependent on this, okay? It requires jQuery to be loaded first so that then it can extend its functionality, okay? Likewise, our own script needs to be below this one because in our own script, we're gonna use this, all right? So there's a logical flow to the way we're ordering our scripts right here. Now then, step two is to add the markup. So let's go down to our block quotes down here somewhere, there we go. And it's telling us to put each slide within an li tag, and then all of those li tags within a ul with a class of our slides, right? So each slide in our case is gonna be one of these block quotes, so we need to put each block quote within an li tag. So that is exactly what I'm gonna do right here. I'm just gonna enclose each block quote with an li tag. And this is just gonna take one minute to do. Copy and paste these, there we go. And then finally, there we go. All right, so they're in the li tags. Now we just need to put the ul above that to enclose them with a class of our slides, just like that. And then pop the closing tag right down at the bottom here. Perfect. All right then, so there is our markup sorted. Now we need to add the CSS. Now it's given us these four rules to add, and that's gonna make sure that it looks correct, okay, when we use the plugin. So we don't need this one right at the bottom because we don't have any images within our slides, so we can leave that one out, but what I am gonna do is copy and paste these three right here. I'm gonna to go to the styles.css and just pop them at the bottom of that file and save, then come back to the index. All right, the next one is to hook up the slideshow. Now. We don't need these script tags because we're in a script file directly. And we don't need this bit right here because this is essentially just a shorthand version of what we're doing right here. So the only thing we need to get is this one line like that. So I'm gonna copy that and paste it right here. And voila, guys, that is doing everything for us. Now we don't have to write out all that code to make those block quotes fade in and out. This right here is calling upon that plugin that we've loaded in and it's doing it for us. Now you'll notice that this right here is calling for the rslides element, which is this ul, 
right? So even if you called this a different class or a different ID, all you'd have to do is use whichever selector you need to grab that element and then call the responsive slides method upon that element, okay? So now let's save that and I'm gonna come over here and refresh. And you'll notice this block quote now, there's only one of them there to begin with. And after a while it changes and it should change again to the third one, and then hopefully it will cycle back to the first one. Voila, pretty cool guys, yeah? One line of code, and that's brilliant because I'm super lazy when it comes to writing JavaScript and jQuery, so that has done the job for me. You will notice that this has got a big gap now at the top, and this is just to do with the styles that we've just copied and pasted in, but we could go back in here and tweak these a little bit. I suspect there's a width, yep, there's a width of 100% going on right there which is fine actually, it's this width we need to change. So let's delete that and save and refresh. I should bring it up, yep. Now I suspect we need to change the block quote width to a 100% to make sure it fills up that whole space there. So I'm gonna just do that right now. And this is just gonna be overwriting a rule that I've done further up. I'm just doing this because it's quicker and I'll say width 100% and important just to make sure it overrides whichever rule I previously written then refresh, and poof, just like a ninja, guys, we have made this fader. That was so much easier than writing out all of that code, right? And especially when you have multiple slides or faders on your website, you know, if we come up here, we might have one here for the lead banner, uh, we might have one here for the different services that we offer, and on other pages as well. So you can use this more than once on your website, and we only have to load it in once. That is pretty cool, yeah? So that is what being a ninja is all about, guys. It's about taking the quickest route <laughs> wherever possible, um, as long as long, guys, as it is good code. And this is good code. This is a good plugin to use. So that is how we use a plugin, guys. If you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to drop a comment down below. Otherwise, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in the very next tutorial.